Hey everyone, welcome to the next tutorial. Um, there's some mistakes I noticed I made in the last one, like uh, this controller.rungame is where I passed in all the uh, arguments the controller needed. I actually need to put those in the controller object itself up here, not the run game method. Um, so when we make the controller, we're actually passing in a display clock, game states, and a starting state. And I also noticed I made a mistake right here where I return the controller. I'm returning a uh, the actual memory location of the controller class with the capital C. Uh, that needs to be a lowercase c because we're returning the controller we made right here. Um, so sorry about that, but yeah, let's go ahead and fix those. Um, so the other thing I want to get started on on this one is I want to make, um, excuse me, Ugh. those is kind of stuffed up. Um, I want to make the controller object and there's some other stuff we'll, we'll make as well. So let's go ahead and make a controller class. So controller, do all the standard stuff. Um, so our, remember our controller class needs a display, clock, uh, game states, and a starting state. And then we'll do self.display equals the display that's passed in. The clock equals the clock that's passed in. The game states equals the game states that are passed in. And then I'm going to make a variable called current state. This will be whatever the current state uh, of the game that's running. So that's going to equal our game states dictionary. And remember the key for it is uh, these strings right here, the names of the states, will be the keys for the states. So um, that starting state that we're passing in, that's one of those keys. So the first uh, state the game will be in will be our starting state uh, that we pass in. Um, there's a bunch of other stuff that's going to go in here, but let's jump down here for right now and make that run game method. And remember, uh, this is, the run game is going to be our main loop that's similar to pretty much every Pi game tutorial you'll see. They have their main game loop, and that's what this is. So we're going to do while true. And I always do this. I always do tick, clock. There's four things you always do. Uh, handle, events, uh, update objects. Well, I'm going to put update uh, state. And then we're going to do render state. Um, so for tick clock, let's do self dot clock dot tick, and, and the frame rate of the game. Remember, we have that in our constants file, so we'll just pass in FPS to it. And I need to import our constants file. So that'll stop complaining at us. Um, so for handling events, I'm going to have an event handler object that I'm going to make. Uh, so from event handler. This is a file we'll make in a second. We're going to import our event handler object and the controller needs one of those. So self.event handler equals an event handler object. And I'm going to put that right here. The event handler is going to have a method called handle events. And later on there's going to be stuff we have to pass into here but for right now I'm going to leave it blank. Um, and I'm going to leave these two sections blank because uh, I'm actually going to make, um, well, let's go ahead and since, since this is complaining at me, this doesn't exist, let's go ahead and make a basic event handler object. So event handler, um, and we won't really put much in here yet, but we'll just go ahead and get it created so that one line stops complaining at me. And it has a handle events method. There. So now main, or uh, sorry, our controller should stop complaining at me. Um, okay, so remember in, uh, where was it? Uh, main, or not main, um, where did I have it? Init, oh yeah. So remember in our init, uh, this, this file is going to contain all of our game states. So the way I want game states to work, there's going to be a base game state class 
that has all the stuff every game state can do, and then we'll make the individual splash screen, main menu, character select classes that inherit all of, all of the game state stuff, and then add their own uh, stuff into it. So let's make a uh, game state class. Um, so we'll do class game state. And we're not going to, again, I'm kind of just getting all these ready. You're going to see me make a bunch of methods that just say pass for right now. Um, but I can tell you the game state method, uh, It all game states will need to have an update method. And <clears throat> there's a bunch of other ones I could add right now, but I don't want to confuse you too much, so we'll leave them blank. But it will have a, it'll have an update method. And let's go ahead and do this. It'll have a render method. Because uh, the game state itself will need to know how to update itself and also how to draw itself to the screen. Um, and in order to draw itself to the screen, uh, you probably know this from other Pi game projects, it has to have a display. So we'll go ahead and just throw the display object in there. Um, so now that we have a base game state class with nothing really in it, but we will add stuff later, uh, let's go ahead and make that splash screen class. And we need to import the base game state class we just made. And it's going to inherit from that. Um, Alright, so now the init should stop complaining at me. And it does. Um, so let's go back to controller and we'll do this for updating the state we'll do self dot current state dot update because remember our splash screen is our current state and because it inherits from game state it has an update method all right so if we go back to controller it's updating the current state and then for render state, we'll do current state. And remember, every state has a render state where it can draw to the screen. And we need to pass in the display to it. All right. Um, so that's that. Let's go ahead and do this. Uh, I'll kind of explain how I want the graphics to work. So every state will also have a graphics object, which if you remember in our um, notes we wrote right here, I kind of wanted the graphics to work like this, where it had a layering system. Um, and I'll kind of show you how we're going to make that. So there'll be a graphics object that every state has that has its own uh, layers in it and has all the logic for how to uh, draw stuff to the screen. So I'm going to make another file, and I just call it GFX. So we'll make a class called GFX. And it's going to use some Pygame stuff, so we'll have to import Pygame. And this this class actually isn't too hard. Uh, later on, there will be some stuff we'll add to it that's kind of I have to explain. But for right now, we're just going to add the layers. So self dot layer zero equals pygame dot sprite dot group. Every layer is just a, a sprite group for pygame, and I'm going to make eight of them. And go ahead and change these numbers out. So zero through seven. So that'll be eight. And I just put notes right here for like kind of what they represent. So this will be like the second background layer. Uh, this will be the first background layer. Um, this will be, what did I have? Platforms? And, and again, what I'm writing here doesn't necessarily mean that's what has to go there. It's just kind of a, a guide on what you can put there. Um, yeah, it was platform slash tiles uh, then we'll do uh, enemies uh, player uh, projectiles slash items etc this will be the foreground and this will be the HUD now what I want to do now that I have all these layers is make a um, a list called layers plural and just add all these layers into it because um, once they're in a list we can run methods that just update them all since they're in a list I'll show you how to do that in a second 
Um, all right. So the graphics layer will also have an update method, and it's really simple. So we'll just do for layer and self dot layers. So this is for every every one of these layers right here. We're just gonna run its update method. So let's do layer dot update. So every frame of our game, every graphics layer gets updated. So it'll update every object that those layers contain automatically. Um, and then the graphics uh, object will also have a render method that needs a display. And we'll do for layer and self dot layers again. So for each one of these layers, we'll do layer dot draw and then pass in that display to it. And this one we will we're gonna add some more stuff into it later because this won't initially put it on the screen but um, let's go to our game state base object so every game state is going to have a graphics object so from GFX import graphics self.gfx equals a GFX object and the game states, so our graphics object has an update method that automatically updates every every object it owns or every every layer it owns or pi game sprite group, whatever you want to call it. But the game state needs to have some logic that tells the graphics object object to run its update method. So we'll throw that in the game state's update method. So self.gfx.update. And same with the render. For the game state's render method, we'll do the... Uh, render method of the graphics object. So if you ever get lost in this code, what I always do, everything starts with this controller. So if you go into the main loop, like if you're confused at how something works, if you look at this main game loop right here, this is where like kind of everything happens every frame of the game, you can be like, well, I'm confused about this graphics update, like how is this getting ran? We'll start with the controller. All right, well, here's our update state. So it's saying the current state of our game is updating so how is that happening? Well, our current state is the splash screen, and it doesn't have an update method, but I see it inherits from game state. So a oh, game state has an update method. So this is the method we're running, and that in turn runs it, the graphics update method. So we'll go in graphics, and you can see here is where all the magic's happening, where it's updating all the layers. Um, so you kind of just start at the controller and work backwards to see how everything's getting to you know, the function that actually does stuff. So the same with the render. It's like, oh, the splash screen's rendering. All right, well, let's go to game state. Oh, there's the render, and it's telling the graphics to run its rendering method. Uh, let's go into graphics, and here's where all the logic for rendering to the screen. Um, we're going to add some more stuff in here later, but I'm not adding it right now. Um, so yeah, that's kind of how that works. Let's see. Let me do something real quick. Um... Let's go ahead and go to event handler. We'll put some code in here real quick. Uh, for handle events, this is where we're going to put the thing you always see um, for Pi game games where you uh, do the for event and pi game dot event dot get. Oh, and because we're using Pi game, we got to import Pi game. All right. <clears throat> so this is how I kind of like to do this. So we're looping through every event that Pi, Pi game can have which is like mouse movements, mouse clicks, keyboard presses. We're going to do this. We're going to do self.check quit event, self.check keyboard event, and self.check joystick event. Uh, we haven't made these yet, but what this is going to do is for every event that can happen in pygame.event.get, all the events that this thing returns, we're, I'm going to make a method for these all separately. So there'll be a method it starts with that checks to see if are we quitting the game, are we clicking the X button, or pressing escape on the keyboard. Um, so that'll just check for anything that can possibly exit out of our game. Uh, the next one is any keyboard events, so we'll handle all that in its own method, and then joysticks will handle, handle separately in their own method. Um, so all these all these uh, methods right here, we'll have to pass in the actual event uh, ob object that's being thrown in, um, and we'll go ahead and write those down here. So check quit event, and it's going to require an event. And we'll pass for right now. Check keyboard event. Pass in the event. Pass for right now. 
and check joystick event. And for right now, we're just going to, I'm going to make it to where you can either click the X or press escape to uh, kind of close the game out. So we'll do um, if event.type equals pygame.quit or if event.type equals, oh, I don't have to type if, sorry. Event.type equals pygame.key down and event.key equals pygame.key underscore escape. Then, oh, oh, I put too many, too many colons right there. Pygame.quit and quit. There's a million ways you can exit out of the game. You can honestly just put quit. Uh, later on, we, if we implement like a save system, I you could put something in here that's like, hey, if I close out of the game, make sure it saves the game first and then quit out. Um, but for right now, we're just going to run these two methods. Uh, you can honestly just do quit or sys exit. Um, there's a million ways to quit, quit out of Python, but this works just fine. Um, this particular method right here, since it never references self, um, we're going to put a decorator static method right here and remove self so it stops complaining at me. And I think we have enough to actually test everything out now. Um, well, pro it's probably not because we haven't gotten some code to actually update the screen. It'll probably still, yeah. Uh, let's see, line 22 on controller. So it's saying it doesn't like something in here. Oh, and you know why? Uh, so, so this is, uh, if you go to our init right here, remember I said don't put the parentheses here because that means when it gets to this line of code, it's going to create a splash screen object. We don't want that. We just want it to store the memory location of the splash screen. We want the actual controller to be in charge of knowing when to actually create an object of these states. Well, right here, uh, I'm, I, we've never, like the current state is still just the memory location it's not an actual object yet so once once we've typed all this in this right here will return the actual class but we need to put the parentheses right here that way it it'll return the class and this says oh create an object of that class and then stores the object in here um, that's why I, we got that message saying self because there was no object so self it doesn't reference anything um, so hit play yeah, we got a window. The window's actually not updating right now because there's more code I need to write, uh, but we'll get to that in the next video. But everything so far is looking good and works. And remember, if, uh, if you ever get confused, just start with this uh, run game um, method right here and just work backwards because uh, this is where everything in the game happens. And we're not going to add too much more to this main loop. There will be a little bit under this update state because we need to write logic for uh, every frame. The controller needs to check to see if the state is ready to flip to the next state. So there will be like a couple more lines we write right under this update state method. But we'll get to that later. Um, but I'll see you guys in the next video.